for joining us for today's webinar. Very excited. Thank you for spending your Tuesday evening with us. Um, we are going to get started. We are here to talk about all the fun and excitement on campus. So before we jump right in, I would like to start with a few housekeeping things, just in case. As you are likely aware, aside from the panelists, the people you see up here, um, everyone else has been muted and cameras are not on. So, however, we really do want to encourage you to ask questions. So at the bottom of your toolbar, you'll have a Q&A function, and that is to submit any questions you might have. Alternatively, you can use the chat feature as well. Um, the Q&A function does work best as we can either answer your question directly, Aaron, hey there, or um, we can answer it live. So Aaron will click a button and we'll talk about it. So please don't be, don't be embarrassed. Ask questions, ask as many questions as you want. Awesome, are we good? Also, like all of you, we are at home. So we can't control everything as much as we'd like to try. So we cannot control the weather, the lights, the internet, the cats. We'll do our best, but we cannot guarantee total radio silence this whole time. So please bear with us, have some patience if we need it. And We'll see where this thing goes. We'll have some fun together tonight. All right. We are gonna be showcasing tonight ways to stay active and involved on our campus. But before we get to that, let's introduce who we have tonight. My name is Rebecca. I am an undergraduate recruitment advisor for Lakehead. I'm based at the Aurelia campus, but wealth of knowledge all the way around. And this particular webinar hits me close to home. I was very involved in post-secondary student government, athletics, volunteering, activities, the whole thing. I love talking about this stuff. This is right up my wheelhouse. And with me today, we've got Erin. Hello, so as Rebecca said, my name is Erin. I am also an undergraduate recruitment advisor. I am an alumna of Lakehead. I was a student as well. And I was unfortunately not as involved as, uh, as Rebecca was. I was a very shy student and looking back, I wish that I was a lot more involved in my student life and really, I wish I, I made it the experience that, that we're encouraging other students to make it. Um, but without further ado, I will pass it along to our panelists to introduce themselves as well. All right, Yen, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm a student outreach officer from Blue Sioux Lakehead University Student Union. Um, I received direct orders from the executive, uh, executive committee to organize campaigns, um, orientation, and I also act as clubs and center assistant, which um, we would, um, what do I would talk more about that? Later, um, I also help to organize events to engage students and remote LUSU services and first point of contact for members of the organization. Wonderful, Jamie. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, my name is Jamie Mantenko. I'm the manager of operations and client services with Lakehead Athletics at uh, the Thunder Bay campus. I was fortunate enough to be able to play varsity sports while I was uh, going to Lakehead. I did graduate from Lakehead in the business, the Honors Bachelor of Commerce program. I played for the women's basketball team. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to share some information with you today about varsity programming and all that has to offer. Exciting, Laura. Hey everyone, my name is Laura Ferguson and I'm the coordinator of programs and initiatives at the Thunder Bay campus for our athletics and recreation department. Uh, so what that means is I oversee all of the more recreational sport and fitness activities, including intramurals, uh, group fitness, our camp programs and all of those fun things, which I will dive into deeper later. Thank you, Alana. 
Good evening. My name is Alana Weber, and I am the Student Wellness and Athletics Coordinator on the Aurelia campus. I'm really excited to chat with you all about opportunities uh, for involvement either at the varsity level, campus rec, or just our community program initiatives uh, in Aurelia. So I'm really looking forward to connecting later on. Thank you. Rachel? Uh, hi folks, my name is Rachel Murray. I use she, her pronouns. I'm uh, the VP Aurelia for LUSU, which is a fancy way of saying I'm an elected representative uh, for students. I am so excited to talk to all of you about how to get involved. Um, like Rebecca, I this is one of my favorite conversations to have um, and finding ways for folks to find their own journeys when it comes to getting involved. And I help facilitate clubs, events, um, campaigns on the Aurelia campus, and also this year have been closely working with Thunder Bay folks. So excited to tell you a bit more of what that looks like. And Erin, take it away. I was on mute and I was starting the chat. <laughs> technical difficulties. Um, so without further ado, we will start our webinar. Uh, Lakehead is far from ordinary, and if you've already applied, then you are ready for this adventure. If you're still in the process of deciding whether or not Lakehead is the right choice for you, then we encourage you to ask a lot of questions so that we can work together and help you make this ex ex exciting decision. If you take a moment to think about your university years, do you want them to be typical, ordinary, just like everyone else, or do you want them to be extraordinary, exceptional, and unconventional? Imagine, if you will, a university that provides a transformative education that is far from ordinary, a place filled with adventure and excitement. A classroom that takes you out into the beautiful surroundings and uses it as a natural laboratory to enhance your studies. An education that helps shape you and your future using world-renowned facilities and researchers that will challenge and guide you in whichever area you wish to pursue. An environment where your knowledge is applied and you receive hands-on education in your first year of university. An education that helps shape you and your future using world-renowned facilities and researchers that will challenge and guide you in whichever area you are interested in. We're also a community that supports every kind of team and is proud of its students and all their accomplishments. This is Lakehead. At Lakehead University, we have much to be proud of. We are the number two undergraduate research university in Canada. We're among Canada's primarily undergraduate universities with McLean's 2020 university rankings, placing Lakehead within the top 10 universities in Canada. We're also ranked by Huffington Post as one of Canada's most beautiful university campuses. We're one of the top 10 most innovative universities in Canada, and we're one of five hidden gem universities in Canada as also rated by Huffington Post. We're looking forward to having you join our Thunder Wolf pack. And as Rebecca mentioned, tonight we're chatting about getting involved across our two campuses. Awesome, thank you. And we might as well dive right in. So Alana, take it away. All right, and Rebecca, can folks do thumbs up or acknowledge anything in the chat or um, tell me? Yeah, they can type in the chat or they can, you know, the, the hand clap emoji. Okay. They've yeah. got that capability as well. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, I see uh, Benjamin, thank you for that. You're acknowledging you're here listening, that's awesome. Um, so again, my name is Alana and I support our athletics campus rec and student health and wellness on the Aurelia campus. Um, I just am curious for people, if you wanna pop in the chat and check in and let me know if Aurelia is one of your campuses of choice, you can just send an emoji message through the chat. Um, just looking for some engagement there. Yes, with an exclamation mark, that is very positive. Yes, that's really great. Um, so my name is Alana, again, uh, on the Aurelia campus and the Thunder Bay campus, what is really unique is that you will not just see us on this webinar, is that when you come to campus, you will know a lot of us by our first names, uh, because we are a community that is very 
um, connected to our student experience. And um, that's one thing that really draws me to continue to work at Lakehead is the connection to our, our student community, which is pretty great. And what better way to get uh, your foot in the door through campus rec or through varsity athletics? And I know not varsity is not always everyone's um, uh, reason to go to school, but it's a lot of um, our students um, draw to check out different universities and colleges, find out what uh, speaks to them in regards to engaging your, you know, personality into your academics. And I'd like to introduce our varsity program. Uh, as uh, many of you have already done your research, uh, we have two campuses, Aurelia uh, being a newer campus to the Lakehead community. And we are continuing to grow as we um, develop and, and recruit more students. So right now our varsity program competes in the OCAA. Uh, the OCAA is a varsity association that competes with colleges and satellite university campuses. So other universities that are connected in the OCAA would be Laurier Brantford, U of T Mississauga, U of T Scarborough, um, and then some of those huge colleges in the GTA, your Humber, Seneca, Fanshawe in London. Um, it's a fantastic um, opportunity to jump in and, and, and visit the OCAA website and see all the sports that are offered uh, at the varsity level. In Aurelia, we offer three different avenues. So we offer men's and women's uh, indoor soccer. Um, so that season starts in September with tryouts and then we get right official um, into training and practices and development right away uh, in September. And then we start competing officially in the winter semester. And um, we love to kick off our fall season with our varsity golf program. Uh, we have a host, uh, a home base in Aurelia, the beautiful Hawkridge Golf Course. So if you like golf, give me a high five or a, ha or a hands up, or I see a hand from Caitlin there. Um, so if you like golf, uh, let me know. We uh, have a fantastic golf program. This is men's and women's golf. Um, and we start uh, right away in end of August and uh, compete at Hawk Ridge and then we it's a tournament sport as well as indoor soccer so we travel around Ontario uh, competing in different tournaments in golf and golf also has the national option with the CCAA um, so our golfers have opportunities to compete nationally uh, in, in Canada so we're pretty um Pretty, uh, pretty nice views on the athletics director side, getting to travel with the golf team and, and seeing, but our athletes are so committed in such an intense uh, period of time for golf uh, from September to middle of October, sometimes beginning of November, snows on, on the course and our athletes are out there, which is pretty amazing to watch. So if varsity sport isn't um, the reason why you're applying, or maybe it's not something you're interested in, we do offer extramural sport. Um, some folks call it club sport, um, but um, in the OCAA, they have this really great other competitive level called the OCR. And um, in the OCR, we actually can compete as a club team among other colleges and universities within Ontario. At Lake Aurelia, we offer the men's and women's basketball teams and men's and women's hockey, again, at club level. So these are tournament sports. Um, you do try out for the team. We have hired coaches um, here and um, we take this, uh, our students actually take this very seriously and I love it. I love the commitment that they, sh that they show up with at practices. Um, however, it does not require the academic or um, time commitment that varsity requires. Um, this is definitely more of a recreational opportunity with a nice fair share of competition. So our men's and women's hockey team competes um, in uh, Ontario. So we play in a league every week uh, starting in December and we play in Barrie and Aurelia. And then we are on the road for tournaments. Um, we do about three or four tournaments a year. And then we have some opportunities for showcasing our athletes at some fun events um, in Aurelia and we compete against alumni or our community members as well. And men's and women's basketball, women's basketball in particular is growing quite rapidly on the Aurelia campus. We've had some amazing leadership with women's basketball and men's basketball is still holding strong. And um, these extramural sports can change out. Um, so I encourage you to check out all the sports that are offered within the OCR under the OCAA. And 
if that level of competition uh, doesn't um, spark you, then you can also compete um, in our club sports that are student led. And these two uh, have been at Lakehead Aurelia since we opened. Uh, this is equestrian and dance. Our equestrian team uh, is a strong team that competes among other universities um, in the Ontario Equestrian um, Association for Universities. And so they, um, they compete um, at different shows throughout the, the winter months. So um, you can see here in this picture, it's a covered dome typically at one of the um, stables, either locally, um, we have hosted a couple times and um, you can compete uh, across Ontario. It's a wonderful association. Again, it's student president uh, led um, and it gets some support from our athletics department. Our dance team also competes. Um, they compete uh, locally at a studio. So they have a home studio in Aurelia and then they compete in different shows um, across Ontario and their season starts um, in November and ends in about at the end of March. So right before, um, kind of right beginning of exams. Um, and then the next uh, level of sport is where I thrived in my university experience, which was intramurals. Uh, I went into university with a strong um, baseball and ultimate Frisbee background, uh, thinking I was going to try out for my baseball team. And um, I chose intramurals because I found it a nice balance with my academics. And I really felt like I connected with a lot of people outside of my program, outside of my residence. And in the Aurelia campus, we offer two sports per semester and we change it up based on student need. Some of those sports that have continued to be um, strong intramural sports is volleyball. Um, we had a outdoor soccer program in conjunction with our community and in ultimate Frisbee. That's what this picture is from, I believe. Um, and it's a great way, um, very um, tangible to compete while studying uh, maybe one, one or two nights a week of, of just fun, relaxed recreation. Um, and if any of you are interested in intramurals, you can message me or send me a chat. Um, and uh, I'm also, we're really open to hearing our student feedback on things that are changing. For example, we introduced cricket um, a couple years ago as our international student demographic uh, decided that um, they would take the lead and work with our um, town of Aurelia and they helped establish a cricket league right in Aurelia in conjunction with the city. So um, again, it evolves as uh, our students needs change so I'm down badminton great question um yep we've run badminton intramurals before absolutely we don't run it currently as a varsity or extramural sport but we definitely have run it um as an intramural offering uh in our community intramurals is a lot of fun Alexis thanks for that <laughs> Um, I know a lot of people on this call right now have either competed themselves as a student um, or, uh, or, it, or helped organize it, um, and it's a great way to enter, um, to enter as well. Kendra, I see your question there. Is dance offered on the Thunder Bay campus? And I'm going to let Laura and Jamie, when they, um, they come on, to, to speak to that. That's a really good question. And um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, especially in Aurelia on the next slide, um, is our new fitness center. So we've opened up a small um, fitness center on our campus and um, we are continuing to grow in the hopes of, of making this a space bigger, but we are so excited to have a, a fitness center on campus. This center will be um, available for all students. There's no additional cost to, to use this space currently. And um, we can't wait for this lockdown to be over so we can open it up to our current student population and, uh, and have our students access this space. I mentioned community options. Um, we are a small campus and we really partner with our community. And so, for example, we have lots of options to connect our athletes and, um, and participants in our, in our Lakehead community participate in our Terry Fox run. We do a annual sledge hockey event, a fundraising event in Aurelia. Um, there's always opportunities to that uh, athletics and rec host for our students to get involved. A bond spiel, some fun curl, I don't know if I have 
have any curlers on the call, but I curled in high school, believe it or not. Um, and I was mediocre. Um, but to say that I remember my skills and I was able to can <laughs> join our community bond spiel um, was a nice opportunity for me as a staff member to get involved with the Aurelia community. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about um, on the next slide is any opportunities and questions that any folks had around, um, you know, I see the questions coming in, but around other offerings or anything that maybe was missed. And I'm just going to pop open the chat here. Um, are intramurals competitive? Um, I, I wouldn't say that they are competitive. You definitely do not need to try out. All are welcome to intramurals at any level. If you've never played that sport before or it's um, something that you were very passionate about playing in, in high school or outside of your schooling, um, you are welcome. It's inclusive. It's um, not, we, we say non-competitive, but I'm going to be honest is that everyone has a different passion level when it comes to sport and athletics and they, they contribute that passion in different different ways. That could be grunting, that could be full speed, that could be a lot of laughs. Um, and uh, at the end of it, um, again, it, we don't call it a compet, we're not tracking, although they always want some sort of cup or acknowledgement of engraving of their team uh, when they do win our intramurals. So we do offer some beautiful shirts that they get if they win and they wear those proudly around campus um, to let everyone know that they won their ultimate Frisbee be intramural league and uh, pretty proud Thunderwolves at that. Um, any other questions? I really am enjoying these questions coming through. So if you can't think of one now, but you think of one after Jamie and Laura chat in athletics and rec, please pop them in there and, and all of us will monitor and see how they go. So um, I'm going to pass it over back to Aaron. So we do actually have some questions in the q and I know that you answered all of the ones in the chat, so I don't have to, to look back in there, but I did answer or I did um, mark some as live. So I just have a student or prospective student asking, are students attending Aurelia able to try out for teams hosted by the Thunder Bay campus? Well, I'm not sure if you can commute uh, up for, for practices, uh, but I will let you know that maybe um, the, the campuses are very far apart um, and we do compete in different uh, varsity levels. So in uh, Aurelia being our satellite campus, we are competing in the OCAA, um, which is a varsity association. And in Thunder Bay, the athletes compete in the OUA, which is a uh, university uh, all universities in Ontario. So um, aside from satellite universities and, um, and colleges. So we do compete in different associations. However, if you are interested in transferring, so let, I, we've had athletes who transfer from campus to campus, your eligibility follows you on the varsity level. So if you've done two years of eligibility um, playing anywhere, um, you can continue um, playing until you max out your eligibility based on what association you're uh, competing in. So the answer is kind of mixed. If you transfer, you can, but if you're attending Aurelia and you want to try out in Thunder Bay, I just don't know if you'll make it for practice unless you have your own private plane. Uh, they are about, I don't, I've never driven it, but I have flown. It's about an hour and a bit flight from Toronto to Thunder Bay. And I think I want to say 15 hour drive, but I've never driven it, but I'm seeing some head nods from my Thunder Bay colleagues here. Um, and the other um, part, Erin, just quickly, is if anyone's on the call who's applying to Lakehead Georgian. Um, so Lakehead Georgian Partnership um, is a growing college university partnership here in Barrie and Aurelia. You can compete at either Georgian College or Lakehead Aurelia. We do compete in the same association. So we call it, you can growl or howl. So they are the Grizzlies, the growl. The growl they growl and we howl as Thunderwolves. Um, so each year we have a form that you can make your declaration. Um, we have a lot of our athletes in indoor soccer and golf do this. 
Um, so you can decide if you'd like to compete at Georgian College or Lake Hedorilia at the beginning of the year. Once you've made that decision, you're committed to that um, institution for the year. So you can try out. If you don't make it, that's okay. You can just enjoy cheering your teams on for that year. And then the following year, you can decide where you'd like to try out again. So it gives you some flexibility as a Lakehead Georgian student to apply um, and compete at either um, Georgian College or Lakehead Aurelia, no matter where you're studying, which physical campus you're studying on. So it gives you some options there. Perfect. We do have a couple more questions. Um, how has COVID impacted sports? Are teams still able to travel for games and tournaments? I can definitely speak to the Aurelia experience and I'll let Jamie and Laura speak to the Thunder Bay athlete experience on that. So we have not had our athletes return to any sport training in Aurelia. Um, given that our indoor soccer program is uh, indoors, that has made it very complicated um, to rent out our sports dome where we normally would be playing. Um, and for golf right up in September, um, they didn't even have the course open for our athletes. So it did really impact our athlete experiences, but I will let you know that we have continued to hire, have our coaches hired. They have been engaging our athletes. We've been providing um, at-home training opportunities. And I know in, in Thunder Bay, Laura and Jamie have um, also had similar experiences with their athletes and I can let them speak to that. Um, but we have continued to um, develop virtual programming. Laura and I um, and a colleague in health promotion have put together a fantastic virtual um, campus rec uh, training opportunities for all students, um, fitness opportunities, programming, um, and uh, we are continuing to kind of pivot and evolve with, with the changing times, but we are so excited to return to campus in whatever form that looks like in the fall or winter, and uh, I can't wait to get our athletes back on the fields and back in, on the courts and ice and other platforms that they play sports on. Um, we're just really excited to get everyone back doing what they love to do. Okay, thank you. Just one more question, and then we'll move on to the, the next slides. Um, is the equestrian option in Thunder Bay, and do you need pre-acquired skills to join, or do they teach you? Hey, Erin. Um, I can touch on this a little bit more when we get to the Thunder Bay club section, but long story short is some years yes and some years no. Our clubs are um, completely student run on the Thunder Bay campus, so it depends on students' interest that year and how many students we have on campus. Um, there has been an equestrian club in recent years though. However, um, past year, they there was not quite enough students to form a club, but there was a network of students that did ride together. Thanks, and Erin. and just to touch on the experience part is you do need to have a little bit of, like if you've never ridden a horse, um, I don't think this level of competition is safe for you to, to compete in. Um, they're jumping. Um, I forget the name, the style of riding, um, and I can definitely look that up as others are talking, but um, we, we do have uh, some experience required uh, to, to compete safely in that sport. And you don't need to have a horse. Um, the horses are provided. I knew that question was coming, Aurora. Uh, the horses are provided by this amazing setup that um, the association has with local stables who offer up their horses. So a part of that competition actually is not riding your own horse and being able to adapt to the horse that you ride on. Um, and uh, really, really unique. Uh, if you've ever ridden a horse, you obviously have such a relationship with them. And this is not a, a chance where you go on to a horse that you've never been on before, but a horse that understands how to compete in this level. So um, more questions, Aurora, if you have them, please please, please um, connect with Rebecca and Erin, and I'm happy to follow up with you. Thanks. Thank you. That was super fun. And now we will move on to Thunder Bay with Jamie and Laura. Do your thing. So hi, everybody. First, I have to say, Alana, you have such a fabulous way of explaining everything. And Hopefully I can follow suit and do the same. Um, so again, my name is Jamie Mantenko. I'm the manager of operations and client services at, uh, in, in athletics in Thunder Bay. And that is a very long winded way of saying that I help um, run the facilities, uh, varsity athletics, um, 
kind of all of the day-to-day -day ongoings uh, that happens on our Thunder Bay campus in athletics. So I uh, have the pleasure of working with a lot of the coaches, have a pleasure of working with social media for the athletes and our teams. Um, so I get a very well-rounded view of kind of what's going on in, in the department and uh, yeah, get to work with everyone on a daily basis. So it's nice coming from a sports background myself. Uh, I really couldn't see myself working in any other industry. Um, so athletics is a great, great way to get involved regardless of it's, if it's at the varsity level, club level, intramural level. Um, it's really just kind of sometimes sticking your neck out there and having fun with it. So I really encourage everyone to find their niche and and, uh, and try to get involved. But anyway, it's more on the varsity athletics side. Um, so to give you a little bit of insight into what Thunder Bay offers, we have a variety of teams here um, that actually different kind of complement what Aurelia has. So um, what we have here is men's and women's basketball. Uh, those are played all all those games and practices are played in our Thunderdome, which is, I don't know if it's just Thunder Bay, but we like to think of ourselves as the number one gym to play in across uh, the OUA. The fan support that we get in comparison to a lot of the other teams in uh, in the league is really second to none. Um, you have to make it out to some of our games when you when you get on campus. Hopefully, there's a lot of you guys coming, uh, looking at coming to Thunder Bay. But uh, the the Thunder Dome is, yeah, you you might as well be at. I, I have Thunder Bay's version of an NBA game, I guess, but it's a, a great place to be in and very electric uh, way to watch watch your teams play. Um, so aside from basketball, we have men's and women's uh, track and cross country running, uh, men's and women's wrestling, uh, men's and women's Nordic skiing, women's volleyball, and men's hockey. And our men's hockey team, we actually don't have a rink on campus. Uh, so we use the Fort William Gardens, which is the major ice rink in town here. Um, it, it's been neat because the city has been very, very supportive of our men's ice hockey program. So we've had a lot of support, not only from um, from the university, but from the city as a whole. And they really are kind of that main state hockey team in, in the city. So that has been um, a neat way to bring the whole community together and not just uh, not just the university and university students as well. So. Um, I had mentioned we play in the OUA, so again, a little bit different than Aurelia. Um, so we play, um, it's Ontario University Athletics Association. Uh, what that com is comprised of is universities across Ontario. Um, so you're going to see our teams playing the uh, U of T's, the Windsors, the, the Max, the basketball, uh, huge Carlton basketball team, if any of you guys are interested. It's um, everyone makes it to those games every year. That's definitely a one to see. Um, yeah, so you're, you're seeing us play all those. I know hockey, uh, they play Trois Rivières as well as in their league. Um, and to be honest, I can't tell you why that little difference is there, but um, they do have a little bit of mix up in their league. Um, so in terms of commitment, typically what um, what a university uh, varsity athlete is looking at is it, it is it is very time demanding. Um, practices are typically about two hours every day. Um, tryouts start in end of August, beginning of September. Um, then you're going to practice for a couple months. Typically, all of those seasons are starting. Preseasons will typically start uh, in October um, or sometimes very late September uh, with regular seasons starting in November. Then you will play all the way until playoffs typically run February uh, with most of the championships being uh, around the beginning of March, which unfortunately would be right around this time, but um, COVID, poor COVID. We're excited to get back next year, which uh, is also important to say everyone, all the leagues have been, uh, have been in touch and really focusing on return to play, uh, return to play plans so that we can get athletes getting that student athlete experience um, in their sport next year. So that's, um, they're, they're, everyone is working very, very hard to see everyone back on the court in the ice. Um, yeah, otherwise in terms of making the team, um, all the teams do hold open tryouts. However, I really would advise anyone who's interested to make sure you reach out to the coaches before open tryouts happen. Contact them, let them know you're interested. Um, they may have specific questions for you. Every coach is different. So it's important to, um, 
to really see what they're looking for. They may be looking for some game tape for you. Um, what experience do you have? What leagues and teams have you played on? So really come prepared with a lot of that information so that you can be putting a confident step forward when, when introducing yourselves to them. Um, all of the coaches information uh, that we have can be found on our website. So at thunderwolves.ca. Um, so just if you take a look, all of our teams are featured there, um, but you're able to get all of the contact information there and they'd be happy to hear from you. Um, in terms of scholarships and stuff is something we wanted to talk uh, touch on, um, but scholarships, so can, uh, sports in Canada is very different than sports in the States. And a lot of people, because the NCAA is so marketed, um, people don't realize those differences when going to university in Canada. So Canada has a lot bigger focus on being a student athlete. And, and that student always seems to come first with that. So um, maintaining your marks, maintaining your grades, really has a large part in the scholarships that you're able to um, to get when coming in as a varsity athlete. So it's really important to make sure that you do keep keep your grades up just because you're a great hockey player or a great runner doesn't mean that that's going to give you a cakewalk into university. So um, please, please make sure you keep that focus. And, and coaches are very interested to see that too. They want to see your commitment levels, your work ethic, all of those things. But but grades play a really, really large, large part of that. Um, and then the last thing I kind of wanted to touch on was requirements to save our city athletes. So great, you've made the team, you've worked so hard, you've, you've gotten those high school grades, but, but what happens when you, you get into um, when you get into university. So there is that minimum requirement. Uh, you usually have to look at maintaining that 60 average at, at, at very bare minimum um, in order to continue competing. Um, at the 80% level, there's actually the, you get to distinguish or you get to be distinguished as an academic all Canadian, uh, which Lakehead has a lot of athletes and, and a good percentage compared to other um, other universities in OUA as well. So it's something that we pride ourselves on that, that we're not just great on the athletic side, but, but we're good in the books in the classroom as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of it on the varsity side. Any, anyone have any questions in regards to varsity at all? We'll open it up at the end again, I know, but if there's anything I can help with um, right now, please feel free to hop on, but not really seeing any I'll pass it on to Laura and if anyone thinks of anything they can reach out to me afterwards. Thanks Jamie. Rebecca do you mind sliding over to the club sports side for me? Thank you. Uh, so we have a really similar model to the Aurelia campus in the sense that we have different levels of sport competition. So Jamie just went over our highest level of competition which is our varsity teams um, and kind of the next tier down would be our club sports. So these are groups of students that are passionate um, and played these sports likely at a competitive level in high school, um, but they aren't playing at a varsity level. And that either is because we don't have a varsity um, team for that sport in particular, or they just aren't looking for something to have that much of a time commitment. Um, so that's a key difference between club sports and varsity is that club sports uh, typically only practice two or three times a week as opposed to every weekday. Um, and they tend to compete in tournaments as opposed to regular leagues. So our photo on the slide here is our men's volleyball team. They typically will compete in a local tournament in Thunder Bay or they'll drive um, to Manitoba to compete um, in kind of the next closest city to us. Uh, and that's kind of the same as all of the other teams listed on the slide. So these teams were our most recently active clubs. We have cricket, men's and women's curling, our women's hockey team, men's and women's rugby, men's soccer, men's and women's ultimate frisbee, and men's volleyball. Um, we have in previous years, as I've mentioned, had equestrian, um, and we have a really close tie to Lusu. I think Yen and Rachel will kind of address this a little bit later on. There's club sports, and then there's just clubs. So they are technically two different things, but they often work quite closely together. So any of the clubs that are sport-based in nature and competitive will kind of register with athletics as club sports, but there are some non-competitive sport-based clubs, um, just to confuse you all with the many options. Um, so one example of that is dance. I think someone had thrown a question in the chat about that earlier. So there is a dance team. They don't go, um, they don't compete through athletics, but they are registered through Lusu and they do perform at some of our varsity halftime shows um, and are still competitive in the sense that they're quite skilled group of dancers. 
Um, so it does change year to year, depending on the group of students that we have. Um, and that's one of my main jobs is supporting what the students are looking for that year from their clubs. Um, this is probably where we get the most questions. So feel free, feel free to throw any questions um, in the chat or the Q&A about clubs. And I will try my best to answer those for you. Um, and I think we'll have, we have some questions at the end of the section. So I'll hold off on answering any of those till then. Um, but for now, if we can slide to um, our intramural slide, I can kind of talk about our next tier of sports, which is intramurals. So these work very similarly to the Aurelia campus. There are more recreational level of sport. Um, so these are any students can participate. It doesn't matter whether you're super passionate, super skilled, or you've never played it before in your life. These are a little bit more about having fun, making friends and building community while you're here at Lakehead. Um, we have the option on our campus for athletes to sign up either as a free agent. So if you know absolutely no one, you're just looking to get to know some people, you can sign up as a free agent and we'll help find you a spot on a team. Or if you have a group of friends that you already know, you're in residence, your whole floor wants to play, you can sign up as a pre-existing team. Um, and you play generally once a week. Uh, we'll offer both fall and winter leagues. Um, and in previous years, what we have offered is soccer, basketball, volleyball, dodgeball, which is my personal favorite, ultimate frisbee, flag football, hockey, and our newest sport last year was inner tube water polo, which no matter where you end up going to university, please play it. It's super fun. Um, but sport offerings do, do switch year to year. We work really closely with students. So while I coordinate this program, the staff for intramurals is, is entirely students. Um, so there is a student in charge of each sport league. Uh, so we're really able to kind of work with our student body on what they're interested in that year. With our larger sports like soccer, we're able to have two different skill level divisions. Um, so maybe those people that are a little bit more passionate, as Alana said, are in uh, Division A, and then our people that are a little bit more for fun are in Division B. Um, so really, we'll find a spot for you no matter your skill level or your passion level. Uh, if you have any questions about intramurals, feel free again to throw those in the Q&A, and we'll answer those when we get to the end. Um, and I'm going to pass it back to Jamie just to talk about some of our non-programmed fitness opportunities through our facilities on campus. Yep. <laughs> um, thanks, Laura. And yeah, with uh, one of the most exciting non-competitive opportunities we have going on this year is we've actually just recently opened up our Wolf Den. Um, and our Wolf Den is our brand new 30,000 square foot facility that has, well, it's actually an addition, so it's added on to our current facilities. Um, so what you can see now is um, is the rendering with it being winter. We uh, we didn't take any outside picks as of yet, but we're hoping to get some pretty, pretty new ones uh, come come the spring and summer but this is the rendering it's exactly what it looks like um so the outside of the building um it also serves as our new entrance to the uh lakehead athletic center in thunder bay um so what it does house is a massive new gymnasium with six nets um a new weight room a new cardio room um new elevator and it's kind of the the new entrance to all of the rest of the athletics so it provides a lot more easier accessibility to to accessing everything else that you're that lake has to offer in athletics um, through this building so students are very excited we were lucky to have it open for one whole week before we went back into lockdown but we were really excited to showcase it to everyone we've gotten some really tremendous feedback from students um, from our members from faculty um, from some community groups that were able to use it um, while we have been open, um, we've been trying to stay open as much as we can, obviously not in lockdown, but um, during our red zones and our orange zones, it's uh, essentially just limited the amount of individuals that we can have in each room at one time. So we've created some, some strategic ways of being able to get everyone in there, including online booking, um, so that you're still able to come work out, um, get the benefits that that working out has to provide um, in, in a pandemic so that you can keep your mental health in check while, um, while going through all of this as well, which has just been so important and so critical to our students. Um, so keeping the facilities open has been really, really important to us. Um, and you can know that we're working hard to make sure that we're, we're trying to be open as much as the government will allow us right now and as safely as possible. Um, 
So in terms of other facilities, this is brand new, so we're really excited about this one, but we have, but we have some really, really fantastic other facilities as well. Um, our CG Sanders Fieldhouse is the home of the Thunder Dome, um, which is where our, our basketball teams, volleyball teams play, um, but you're also given access to that to shoot around. We have six hoops in that gym also, and it's always been kind of neat to be able to practice and play where, where the Thunderwolves uh, varsity teams do as well. Um, we do have an Olympic size swimming pool. Um, we have a, another weight room in the Sanders Field House. We have beach volleyball co uh, courts. We have uh, Moto Yoga, which is our heart you hot yoga studio on campus. Um, so all of that is housed in the CJ Sanders Field House. And then we also have our um, our hangar. So our hangar is where we have our AstroTurf field, uh, our 200 meter track, uh, more weight rooms, uh, dance room, a cardio facilities. Um, and we're currently working on our uh, functional fitness corner uh, where we have a big uh, functional fitness rig. We're looking at turfing that area so that uh, our members can, can incorporate that type of workout into their day-to-day -day, um, day -day athletics and stuff as well. So um, and that's kind of it from a facility standpoint. I know Laura um, is also responsible for running some um, her, her fitness classes and all of that kind of thing. Laura, do you want to do some more explaining on that? For sure. Uh, so one of our other programs is our fitness and instructional program. So there's three main ones that run on a year to year basis. There's our group fitness classes, which is you guys are probably familiar with either HIT or Zumba, Pilates, that kind of style of class. Um, so those are housed on the slide here. You can see our aerobic studio in the hangar, which is where we typically do any instructional classes. Uh, we also um, typically will offer personal training. We weren't able to this year due to COVID restrictions in our region in Thunder Bay, uh, but we're hoping to get that back up and running when our students are back on campus. So those are great for any of our students that maybe haven't had access to a gym before and are looking to learn how to use the equipment. You can do as little as one single session just to kind of get an idea of how the place works. Um, or you can look for a more formal, longer training program. Uh, and then we also have offered swimming lessons in the past as well. So these are adult swimming lessons specifically for any of our students that maybe didn't have the opportunity before to learn how to swim. Um, so it's a really comfortable environment as it's all adults in that those classes. Um, and then we've also worked with some of the Lusu clubs before to offer some other instructional programs uh, there's a really great martial arts community in Thunder Bay that uses this space um, and they've helped us run some self classes before. Um, so again, these change year to year based on what our students are looking for, but it's a really great space that we're able to offer for instructional programs. Um, I've seen a couple of things slide into the questions here um, and Jamie just typed an answer, but fitness facilities on the Thunder Bay campus, um, your membership is uh, included when you pay your tuition fees. So there isn't anything additional to access the fitness center. Um, you just got to bring your student card and register with us. Um, any of the programs that we've talked through in your murals and club sports typically have a small fee associated just to help with um, all the equipment and staffing that is associated with them. But we try to keep things as low cost as possible to our students. Um, and I saw Aaron, there's some live questions in there. One is asking about curling, if it's ever been an intramural in Thunder Bay. Um, it has only been a club sport program. However, they have worked with us to offer some curling nights for our students. Um, so there isn't an actual league outside of the club, um, but curling is a huge community in Thunder Bay. Um, so there's lots of opportunities, even if we aren't able to offer a club ourselves, it's likely that there's a community um, team in the city that you would be able to connect with. And that's something where we hope to be able to provide resources for as well. Um, personal training question just came in asking if that's included. Unfortunately, that is an additional cost as those trainers um, are have to go through additional qualifications and everything um, and are compensated for their time for developing programs. Awesome. Rebecca got it. I found a really a based question. Um, are there pools available or a swim club team at all for Aurelia? Um, so we don't all have a pool on campus. Um, however, we do have a brand new uh, community recreation center that is just like in Thunder Bay right now, open and closed and open and closed. Um, but um, they just built a absolutely stunning new pool and the local Aurelia 
uh, team does compete there. So if you are a swimmer, which I know many of our students do swim, um, there are opportunities for you to get involved in swimming. And it is um, about an eight minute drive from campus. Uh, again, brand new facility. And uh, I encourage you to go on to the city of Aurelia's main page and you'll see that beautiful new facility uh, right there um, for, uh, for you to take a look at. That's wonderful. Erin, do we have any questions before we move on? We have one more that just came in. Does the Pool in Thunder Bay hire student lifeguards? Yes, we do. And we're always in search of them. So it is, um, <laughs> please apply. Um, that would be, yeah, would be great. So I can, um, I can leave my email address with with Rebecca or Erin or however my email address and contact information is also on the website. Um, so if you yeah visit thunderwolves.ca and we'd be happy to keep you on file for when you when you get here. That would be lovely. Oh, we have wait. another question that came in. Sorry, uh, has there ever been a ringette team in Thunder Bay? To my knowledge, I've only been at Lakehead for two years. We have not had one since I've been here, but it would be really cool if we did. Um, and just to tack on what Jamie was saying about lifeguards is athletics, both campuses um, have student employees. I highly recommend it if you like sport in any way whatsoever, check out both campuses websites um, in like August or whenever you decide you're going, reach out to myself, Alana or Jamie. We have lots of student employment opportunities and it's a really fun atmosphere to work in. That was my job all through undergrad. So I highly recommend it if it's lifeguarding or you just wanna work at the facility attendant, you wanna work with intramurals, reach out to us because we're really fun people to work for. I echo that, not that we're really fun people to work for because that I highly agree with. Um, but um, that is actually one thing that I, I'm glad Laura brought up because a lot of our first year students, um, I think miss out on the application process that happens in August for on-campus jobs. So um, once you become a Lakehead student, you'll get access and login information on how to search for jobs. But on My Success, which is um, a platform that our students use, um, we that we do post tons of student jobs there. And I, I always say this at Fast Pass, which is our um, summer program to help you get registered. Um, is that uh, go look online and go look for those jobs in August. Um, and no matter what institution you uh, end up with, and I really hope it's with us, um, but getting those summer jobs, um, those school year jobs help that, um, that get involved component. So let's say you're on the call and none of this speaks to you. I saw a question that came through about like culinary opportunities and other things is when you become an employee, a student employee, um, I feel like, and, and I was very involved in my institution like that, um, you just get to, connected in so many ways um, for all of those little pieces of information that not everyone is very aware of. It's out there, but you might not be aware. Um, the training opportunities, the wicked opportunity to work with Laura and Jamie and I, um, the, uh, the co-curricular record um, acknowledgement of your time and the references you have, like it, I think it's just so tangible. So if it's a summer job you're looking for, I really inc encourage folks to, um, to search for work study. I see the link from Erin in there. We're Work study jobs. Um, we're, we're always looking for refs. I don't know if Laura is always looking for refs, but for folks who might not want to play, but want to sideline and be the boss, come and apply. We are looking for bosses on the court, on the field. Um, we, we need your help to help run the sport. So I'm really glad you brought that up, Laura. That's a really good point. Oh my goodness. You're hitting me where I live. This is amazing. And ringette. Thank you. Thank you. That is my heart belongs to that sport, has always, will always. Um, all right. Thank you, Jamie and Laura, for our Thunder Bay info. It's amazing. And moving slightly away from athletics a little bit, beginning with orientation, Lakehead provides you with opportunities to get involved, have fun, meet new people, create connections that will last well beyond your first year. Whatever your thing is, student government, leadership, music, gaming, volunteering, there is no shortage of opportunity to get involved. Both campuses have a number of clubs and associations for you to get involved with, and they cater to students with similar interests. Now, your on-campus activities can be tracked and used later on with your resume through our co-curricular record. We call it CCR. 
This is similar to an academic transcript, but it tracks your extracurricular involvement and the skills that are associated with that activity. And as a perfect segue, like I wrote it myself, I'd like to introduce um, Rachel and Yen, who can speak to student union and the student experience. Rachel. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, so Yen and I are going to tell you all about how to get involved um, with the student union. I myself, uh, just to give you a little bit of a history, I got involved with Lucy in my first year. I was involved in different clubs, um, was an executive of a club, um, and then volunteering throughout with campaigns and um, events on campus to being involved on the board of directors, which makes decisions on the larger um, goals of the organization. And then the last two years, I've been an executive. So in terms of working full time for students um, and such, but I'll pass it to Yen to tell you a bit more about Lucy. Thank you, Rachel. Um, hello, everyone. So Lusu, or um, in a way, Lakehead University Student Union, um, we are a nonprofit organization founded in 1981. And we are a separate entity from Lakehead University, and we advocate on student behalf. Um, Lusu is the biggest job provider at Lakehead University. We employed it more than 80 students annually. Um, we also provide a wide range of support and services to students, such as health insurance, universal bus pass, um, academic appeal, food bank services, LGBT community support, indigenous and international student support, student discount network, student club, scholarship, funding, and more. Um, so let's talk a little bit about clubs. So clubs are the cornerstone of student life at Lusu. So whether you are interested in sport, movies, video games, politics, or academics, um, you can find like-minded students by starting a club. So almost anyone can join any club on campus. Um, this year, we have more than 50 clubs organized by students, and all clubs receive $200 to start. We also support clubs in booking on campus pay and advertise your events through our new letters for free. We also fund the insurance required for clubs to run their events on and off campus. If you can find a club that you are interested in, just start one. Um, you can start anything, any clubs, uh, whether skiing or uh, curling. We also, uh, in Thunder Bay, we also organized different events for the past uh, years. Um, and last year, there was a significant one, which is Lusu Tech the Hills. So I think at that point for um, basically a skiing event for students. Um, and that at that point, I think it was $45 for a lip ticket, but we got a really good deal with the hills. I think it was like 10, $20. So it was a really crowded event. Um, and I think two years ago, we organized that twice in a year. Rachel, do you wanna take on the student clubs and activity in Aurelia? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to give you folks um, on the Aurelia campus, uh, I'm, a, I'm also a student on the Aurelia campus and this has been, one of my favorite ways to see student life uh, thrive in Aurelia, as well as in Thunder Bay. Uh, student clubs are a great way for folks like men or like Yen mentioned about finding other like-minded individuals. Um, anything, I find that in Aurelia clubs are a huge support for students um, because there are not centers in Aurelia. Oftentimes clubs like um, the Black Liberation Collective, Mental Health Outreach Team, um, along with BOSS, which is the Business Aurelia Student Society, um, are really at the heart of student life when it comes to um, creating really great events and um, programming for students to be involved in, or involved in. As well, when it comes to Aurelia, the numbers are a little bit less just given the population of the students. So in terms of starting a club, you only need four other friends, including yourself, that makes five individuals. 
and to receive funding, it's 10. Um, in terms of um, finding folks, there's usually a club stay at the beginning of the semester. This past year, it was virtually done, which was kind of cool. And um, as well, in terms of activities, um, we also, um, for the number or last number of years, we've taken students tubing. Um, and in terms of online um, programming this year, I think it's been a really great opportunity for um, cross, um, for working with both uh, students in Thunder Bay and Aurelia in terms of having things like come hang out with Lusu, in terms of just having low key spaces for students to come and engage with one another and that. But at the end of the day, if you don't see something that sparks your interest, Starting a new club is very easy to do and finding others in terms of whether it's program based or friends. Um, and we're here to help you do so and finding other folks uh, to join. But yeah, that's a little bit more on the Aurelia side of things. Back to you. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so Lusu centers, uh, we have six different centers that you can see on the screen. Um, and these center, they provide a support supportive and engaging community for students from all kinds of background. So Lusu hire one coordinators and two assistant uh, annually to run these centers. Um, so the first one is the um, Aboriginal Awareness Center. So the AAC provide peer support opportunity for student uh, involvement with Aboriginal teachings, ceremonies, um, and traditions, as well as education and advocacy on current issues um, facing Indigenous students. Uh, Lusu is on Lusu on so health to fund the annual powwow organized by the AAC. The Gender Equity Center is a feminist action center that provide peer support, education and advocacy and remote uh, progressive changes to attitudes and policies on campus. The Sustainability Initiative Center, we organize events that promote sustainability awareness on campus. Uh, we are an active in policy work within the university to incorporate sustainability as a key operational and curriculum focus at LECAD. The Bright Central is a safe space for the LGBTQ community members. You can come and speak to your community group, uh, your club, your work, workplace, class, or private group to educate them about social justice issues, including anti-oppressive thinking and LGBTQ blast issues. We also have like a huge collections of queer movies, books um, that address a variety of subjects that are free to access for all students. Um, the food bank. So over the year, we are we provided food for more than four thousand students annually. We also work with different partners uh, to provide fresh vegetable to campus. So basically the food bank is a free on campus grocery for students. You can access the food bank once a month and there are no limit on how many items that you can take. Um, the last one is the multicultural center. It is also a safe and friendly environment for students who come from different backgrounds. Um, we are aim to spread cultural awareness on campus in the community through advocacy and actions. We also organize cultural, cultural day every year. Um, students will receive $200 funding to represent their culture and there are no limitation. So you can either make a food of your choice or perform a traditional dancing or drumming, anything that you like. I'm gonna pass on to and also just to add in terms of for folks on the Aurelia campus, uh, things like the uh, food bank, we do have a food pantry. So the way in which that um, operates is uh, through an online form. And because there's no physical space for a food bank currently, it's operated through gift cards for um, different grocery stores for students to access as well when it comes to centers. This year, I am so excited because the fact of 
oftentimes students can access a lot of the programming because it has been online this year. Um, I myself have um, taken part in a few support groups in terms of just an avenue to be uh, more social and in terms of um, when it comes to multicultural um, events and such that has also been something that's run through um, a club that's been on uh, the really campus Luma um, in terms of creating more um, inclusive environments. Um, then also on the next slide to tell you a little bit more. So the Argus and um, Lake City Radio. So the Argus is um, student run uh, newspaper. So it gives students or student voices an opportunity to be heard. Um, this does have opportunities to be involved in both Aurelia and Thunder Bay. Um, issues going out mostly online these days, but just to give you guys um, a real, or real understanding of what's going on in the world and through a student perspective. And it also does give um, employment opportunities uh, for writers and um, yeah. All right, and what about Lakehead U Radio? Uh, Lakehead U Radio, also another opportunity to listen, stay tuned um, and such for what's going on in the world of students, as well as um, a great, just another opportunity to uh, hear voices of what's going on in the world and um, yeah. All right, thank you very much. And Yen. Thanks, Rebecca. So, unfortunately, the the apple the apples in the study uh, the coffee house right now is closed due to the pandemic. Uh, but just to give you guys a little bit of background, so the outpost is a place to be on campus for great food, amazing music, um, with two floors and over ten thousand square feet of space. We, are, we offer affordable food for students. Um, and before the pandemic, we have shows and events every month. Um, so technically, if you are, like I said, if you are a club and you want to book uh, a table or a space um, at the outpost or the study, uh, they're all free. Um, basically the study, that's the name that it can say is a coffee house. But if you feeling a little bit fancy, we, we got more than enough specialty drinks to keep you satisfied. It's also um, a very good, like warm, friendly, and a quiet place for you to study. And I'm passing on Rachel. So services, Lusu uh, operates and serves students in a variety of ways. Uh, this includes the Lusu Health and Dental Plan. So it gives students um, some coverage while they're attending uh, university. Um, in terms of if you already have coverage through a parent or guardian you or spouse, um, you can use this hand in hand in partnership with that. Or um, if you're a mature student and have dependents, they can also be added to this plan. Uh, the U-Pass is something that is operated both through Thunder Bay and Aurelia, in, and it offers um, affordable transportation for students. Currently in Thunder Bay, it is um, operating so folks can access um, this through uh, the Students' Union, as well as in Aurelia this year. Uh, because there is not an opt-out option, it has been suspended for this year um, and such, but um, oh, sorry. In terms of other ways in which um, services, uh, we do offer um, support for students when it comes to supports in terms of rep or representing student rights in a variety of capacities um, within the university and beyond. Um, in terms of services as well, the food bank and food pantry are uh, for folks if need be. And also, any of our staff are fantastic to help out when it comes to uh, clubs and um, any services that we do offer. Um, we do offer fe free feminine hygiene products to um, on the Aurelia campus in terms of coming in to print something or scan and uh, fax something. 
but we're here to help and provide any service needed for students in any capacity. And I will pass that off to Yen as well. Thanks, Rachel. So last but not least, like I mentioned at the beginning that we are a student organization. So if you are passionate about issues that matter the most to students and are ready to lead the chart toward improving student life, you can always nominate yourself uh, every January. So the, ec the election normally takes place between January and February, and the executive position is a full-time one-year contract position starting from May 1st to the end of April. Thank you, everyone. Um, in terms of, also in terms of if you're looking to be an executive or um, just be on the board as a director, it's an excellent opportunity to get involved um, as well in terms of other committees. Um, there's a lots of opportunities for students to get involved in uh, Lakehead Senate, as well as be on the Board of Governors. Student voices matter in a variety, in, in all capacities and um, applying through any of these positions are wonderful ways to get involved. Um, and like it's been mentioned many times, it's you can chart your course in any way you want and um, find the folks that um, you find a home away from home with and uh, make the most of your university experience. But know that Lucy and the Students' Union are here to represent your rights and uphold those. And um, yeah. Uh -huh. Awesome. Thank you. Well, here we are at the end won't, won't. i'm going to reach out to aaron and we're going to do any questions that we have that's everything for the presentations currently but we will stick around for questions and we'll do a little bit of a wrap up after all of these questions i'm hoping there's like a hundred so let's see what we got yeah um so this one is in regard to uh dance was mentioned a couple times just during our webinar here do you have to have competitive experience to dance in thunder bay I can, I can tackle this one. So the best thing to do for any of you who are interested in any of the sport-based clubs is um, on the Lusu club directory got linked a couple times in the chat um, and there's contact information if they're registered with athletics on the athletics website is reach out to their current president. Um, they can give you an idea of the students if there's a tryout process, anything like that. I am 99% confident that the dance team has some trained competitive dancers, but then also just some people who know how to dance. They didn't necessarily compete. Um, most of the clubs are pretty accepting of people of all skill levels. Um, so the best thing that you can do is try to reach out to someone from that club. As much as we try to know everything we can, there's a lot of clubs on campus. So the inner workings of each um, student government within that club is um, not always known to us. So I highly recommend uh, reaching out to them. The dance team has been really active this year on their Instagram. Um, they've been hosting Zoom classes. So if uh, you're on social media, that's a great way to find them as well. Perfect. Yeah, they also, uh, as far as I know, they also offer like drop-in for both beginners, intermediate and advanced dancer. So technically you don't need to have experience. Thank you. Um, another question here, do you suggest that students join more than one club? Um, I, in terms of, I've had the experience of being part of more than one club. I wouldn't recommend being an executive of more than one club, but if you want to be involved um, and be an active participant, um, absolutely go for it. Um, recognizing that um, we as individuals are very much intersectional in the way in which we um, are involved. So um, absolutely, if there's more than one way um, that it sparks your interest, then absolutely go for it, but also recognize your capacity as well. Yeah, normally clubs, they, they kind of run their own events on their own time frame. Just like, uh, for example, we have a martial art club. So they will, if you if you join the club, they will give you like a schedule, uh, a practice schedule every week. Um, and it depends on them. Uh, and then you can pick whatever the time that suits you the best. Uh -huh. 
So as it was mentioned as well, I have linked the club directories a couple of times in the chat. There's a Thunder Bay directory and an Aurelia directory. Um, but if anyone's able to answer, are there any clubs like sign language or something else for people who are hard of hearing, if anyone knows? So like I said, we uh, we have more than 50 clubs this year, but I, I'm as far as I know, uh, I don't think we have any clubs like that. But like I mentioned before, you can always start your club. You can, can always start your club and we provide $200 to start. Doesn't look like I have any other questions. There's just one that I'm gonna type out the answer to, but other than that, it doesn't look like we have anything right now. Well, wasn't that fun? Um, I want to say thank you not only to the panelists, but to everybody who was able to join us tonight. Thank you for taking time out of your Tuesday evening to hang out with us and talk to us. I had a lot of fun. I don't know about y'all, but I had a lot of I had a lot of fun. I had a great time. Um, please don't let this be the last time we talk to you. I was going to say see you, but I can't see you. Um, we've got tons of more webinars. We've got live virtual campus tours. We've got virtual events. We've got drop-in advising sessions. We've got applicant receptions. There's so much more to get involved with. So please, please, please hang out with us again. Let's have some more fun together. So uh, a few of us will hang out a little bit longer just for any last minute questions. But as far as it goes, that's it. That's all, folks. Thank you so much again and uh, have a great night. Rebecca, if anyone is kicking around the call, I see all those little social bubbles there. And I also see lots of buzz in the, the side about already folks wanting to connect and like know who's going and where what campus they're going to, what program that like just takes me back to that feeling of like, who is going to be my roommate in res when there was doubles and all of the things. And one thing uh, for anyone who's still on the call is um, we're all on social media, like all everyone on this call, we have social feeds. Right now, that is where we are living. We are putting everything out there for everyone to see um, because we know that's how we are connecting right now within our departments. So um, all you have to do really on Instagram is type in Lakehead and you will see almost everything Lakehead pop up. But to plug Campus Rec, like look up Lakehead Campus Recreation, Lakehead Varsity Athletics, Lakehead Aurelia Athletics, uh, depending on what campus you're going to, I encourage you to follow that campuses, those campus feeds. Uh, Lusu, uh, I know, has two feeds of Lusu Aurelia and, um, and the main uh, and Lusu Thunder Bay. Um, but yeah, follow us on social. Um, that's where we are. Um, I remember we were on Snapchat. That died. I'm sure things are on TikTok now. I am not on TikTok, as Laura knows. Um, but um, I, what I really, I really encourage you connect with us there. Um, that is where we are posting lives. We are posting programming. Even before you are officially a student, you could participate in Laura's instructor classes that they're running. Like you can engage with us as, as you're starting to make your decision or you already have. So I'm so glad um, people are, are chatting along here. And uh, thanks Rebecca and Aaron for uh, letting us be part of this conversation. I couldn't believe how many great questions were coming in for all of us. Thank you. Yeah, that's social. Sometimes, sometimes I think I'm old. I don't know, but I mean, I'm not. I, you know, sometimes Never admit I just how think, old you are, Rebecca. <laughs> I won't say the number because let me tell you, physical and mental don't match. Um, okay, so I can see there's so much information in this chat. Um, I posted my email address. If anyone has any specific questions about programs or campuses, please reach out. We, we will be happy to, to talk at any point in time. Uh, but for now, we are going to end here. Thanks again. And I hope everyone has, has a good night. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.